All right, so welcome to the second video on the topic of thermodynamics. And I'm going to uh, kick start with uh, clarification about the first law. Not so much a clarification, but just as a small addition, what is the, uh, what is the device of the perpetuum mobile, the uh, first type? Because that is, uh, that is included in our presentations, although I haven't seen it included in exam, but I'm just going to go through it r real quick. What is the direction of spontaneous processes, which is something that in everyday lives we, uh, we find easy to understand? What is reversibility and irreversibility, and where would I expect each to occur? Where, where would I observe each of those? And what are microstates and macrostates? And these are not to be confused, even though they are, they are uh, very, very easily confused just by saying macro and micro. So we need to define those and make sure we understand the differences. And what is a thermodynamic probability not to be confused by mathematical probability? And we'll, we'll make that distinction as we get there. So first of all, uh, clarification about the first law. And there is such a thing called, and it's, and it's a concept, um, perpetuum, perpetuum mobile of the first type. And this basically means cannot be constructed. We don't have such a thing. And this basically what this means is that according to the first law, we cannot have energy created or destroyed. It just transforms. So it is impossible for me to build an object that is going to do work without consuming an equal amount of energy that is associated with that work. Basically saying each work has some energy associated with it. If I want to lift a book, I need to burn some calories. So I cannot build a car, I cannot build a car that is going to drive for a hundred kilometers without uptaking the energy that is equivalent with this hundred kilometers. So each work has some sort of energy associated with it and I cannot build a perpetual mobile of the first type that is going to do work and not take up energy that is associated with that work. So having said that, let's get started with the direction of spontaneous processes and I'm taking ideas from the presentation by Professor Vamoshi, by Professor Vamoshi from the department. And uh, basically, he, he states something very interesting. If we have a little bouncing ball here that, that I just let go, I let go and it bounces up and down and up and down, I can expect it to slowly decrease and slowly go through up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down until it gets to a rest. So basically, I, I gave it some sort of energy and that energy went away. But we said that energy is not destroyed, it's just transformed. And it just so happens that this energy was lost as friction to the outside environment, friction to the air particles around it. And in the same manner, if I have gas molecules, let's just say, um, and I'm going to I'm going to delete all of my gas molecules here. I'm going to make this empty. Let's just say I have a container and I release in it, I release in it a small batch of, of gas molecules. I just release some gas molecules. I know that if all the gas molecules are here and then they're going to slowly fuse through, through the container and I'm going to have a container that is going to evenly have, uh, this is my container, and after I release the gas in it, just let's say one mole of gas, it is slowly going to fuse throughout the container. And we know these, these processes actually take place from our day-to-day -day lives and day-to-day -day experiences. And again, this is all based on the law saying that energy is not really, it's not really disappearing, it, just, it is just moving from one form to the other. And if we, if we take a look at what direction these processes would go, well, if I, have, if I have this ball here and it's resting on the ground, I cannot really expect air particles to collide with it in the right way and impart their energy and cause it to slowly bounce up and up and up until it bounces up entirely. And, and really what, what needs to take place here is just to have this this uh, process uh, is directed in the other way. Its direction is the other way. But we know that this doesn't spontaneously happen in everyday lives. Otherwise, we may have been observing cars sitting in the streets, slowly bouncing up and down. It's not really going to take place. So the direction 
uh, of spontaneous processes, the direction in which things were spontaneously occur is the way we know them to every, uh, in everyday lives. And if we take this example here, let's just say I have a container that has gas diffused throughout it. I can't really expect all the gas molecules to convene at a certain point in the, in the container and just, and just mass up and have one mole of that gas uh, all, all really cooked up in one specific corner of the container. Otherwise, maybe the room I'm sitting, I'm sitting here right now is going to have all of its oxygen uh, only in one point and I am going to suffocate. So this, this really doesn't take place. So we really have an intuition as to where processes are going to spontaneously go, which way. And this is based on our intuition, but it also have, has a thermodynamic and uh, probabilistic approach to it. So let's get started with the idea of irreversibility. And what's important to understand here, this is another idea taken from, uh, from the presentation by the professor. What we have here are two different processes. These are two different processes. And right away, if I, if, I, if I look at the first one and I ask you, hey, why don't you tell me what direction is this going? Is it going in this direction or is it going the other direction? Is it going the other direction? And what you would say is, hey, th these are billiard, billiard balls. And if you needed to put the pieces together, you would say this billiard ball is going this way. And then it's impacting this whole lot. And then they're all going their respective, uh, their respective directions and they're all separating. And, this, and if you say, this is the only way this can happen, I can't really expect all of the balls to align in the right order. I can't really expect all the balls to align in the right order, right here, in a specific manner, and impart all of their energy at a given point and just shoot off this, this one billiard ball. We can't really expect that to happen intuitively. But if we look at the second, at the second example, we can say, hmm, well, this can occur either way. This can occur in the sense that these balls are, are getting close together in this sense, and then they have some sort of interaction, and then they're shot off their respective way. And also I can look at it, hey, this could happen the same, the same way, just opposite. This could actually take place the opposite way. This could take place the opposite way. Interesting. So what is the difference? What is the difference between these two processes that make this process not reversible and this process reversible? And it just so happens that we have, we have a terminology for this. And this is, this is called, let's just say this is the big picture. This is the big picture. And this is just uh, an, an event, an event that happens between particles. So you can imagine that if I add another particle here, let's just say I add another particle, another particle here, and then, and then this is what happens. You would say, hey, this can only happen in probably one way. This is heading this way, and then there's an impact, and then all the energy is imparted and everybody's going in their own directions. And the more particles I'm going to add, the closer I'm going to get to this example up here. And this leads us to talk about uh, the concept of microstates and macrostates. And this is really important to understand, and it's actually pretty easy to understand. Microstates pertain to the state of each particle, state of, let's say, each particle in the system, or in the particle, particle level, in the particle level. What is each little billiard ball doing? And a macrostate is really the Big picture, what are all the balls doing at a given point? Where are they all going? And what's important to understand, and this is a good time to mention it, is that if we're talking about these events where a ball is gathering energy from the air and is bouncing up, this does not violate the law, the first law of thermodynamics. The first law says energy can't be destroyed. It can, it can be destroyed. It can be created. It can be transformed. We can transform energy, but we can't destroy or make it. And this is this is an, uh, an idea of a ball, of, rather, this is an idea of a ball jumping up. This does not violate the first the first law. This is actually energy being transformed. So this doesn't violate it. it we just don't see it in everyday life. And now we're going to understand why. So a microstate is a state that happens in the molecular, or rather, very, very small micro level. So it's a micro level. 
micro level, and a macro state is something that happens in the big picture. And what I mean by that is that, that every possible outcome is associated with a given, let's say, with, with every macro state, every possible outcome. Let's just say I'm throwing a dice. This is my dice. This is my dice. This is my dice, and I'm tossing it. And I'm wondering, what is the, what is the occurrence, or what is the probability that I would observe getting a 1 through 2, and what is the probability of me getting a, a 3 through 6 inclusive? And the microstates associated with this big picture, this is a big picture, the micro, the microstates associated is getting either a 1 or, or a 2. I can't really get anything else that describes this idea. So if I want this event to occur, these are the microstates that are associated with this event. Whereas the microstates that are associated with this event, getting a 3 through 6, is 3, 4, 5, and 6. And you can see right away that there are more microstates associated with this event. And that is why, really, this event is going to be more probable. If you think about it, it makes sense. So if I say, well, what is my probability now of getting just a 1, just a 1, and we know that there's only one microstate associated with it, and here I'm just going to change it to 2 to 6, and you can already see that I'm going to have to add another microstate here, and this is getting more and more probable. And this is the, uh, the, prob the probabilistic or statistical explanation to why we don't see balls jump up in the air. And I'm going to make sure that we explain it in a, in a more intuitive way. Let's just say uh, I'm splitting, let's just say I have a continent, and I'm just splitting it into a grid, into a grid. Just think of it as, as a grid that has coordinates in it. And in this coordinate, in this specific spot on the grid, I have a desert. And it's also surrounded with other deserts all around it. There's just a big, big desert that I'm splitting to, to different coordinates, different grids, you can say. And this is also desert, this is also desert, this is all also desert. But over here, over here I have, you can say, an oasis. I'm going to put it in blue, an oasis. And we know that whenever you have, whenever you have um, a body of water, whenever you have a body of water, you can have water, water, on the same from it, and then you can have formation of a little, a little water body that travels, and we can have rain possibly occur. And you can just imagine that this grid lasts, lasts a long, long distance, a long, long distance. And this is all, this is all desert. This is all desert. And then I'm looking at this guy right here in the very middle. And I'm asking the question, what is the possibility that this guy in the middle, which is a desert block, what is the possibility that I'm going to see rain tomorrow, rain in this point? Well, if you think about it, we can have weather come in from different directions. We can have weather come in from here, 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 maybe here, maybe all the way from here, 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 or here. We can have any weather associated with any one of these squares move in and come here tomorrow. There is one possibility, though, that the weather coming in from this oasis, we're going to have rain coming in all the way here tomorrow. Is it probable? No. Uh, is, is it rather, is it going to happen? Probably no, but is it probable? It is probable because there is a microstate associated with it. So if we ask, well, is it, is it, is it going to happen with high probability? Well, probably no, but could it happen? Could it happen? Yes, it could happen. So. If we take the two situations of having rain tomorrow in this region or just having hot weather with no rain, what we're asking is really these situations. How many situations do we have associated with hot, with hot, uh, with hot climbing? And all we really need to do is to count all the, different, all the different areas around it that it can get hot weather from. So we can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. And we can just, let's just say we have, we have 20... We have 20 squares around it that can bring hot weather to it. And there is only one square that can really bring rain to it tomorrow. So this hot event is, so, is more probable than this one event. That is also, it, it is also 
probable that it has some sort of probability, but it probably wouldn't occur. And that is why in the Sahara we cannot expect heavy rains and floods tomorrow, because the Sahara is mostly surrounded is mostly surrounded by desert climate. But it is, uh, it is to an extent you can say there is some sort of probability associated with having 30 degrees tomorrow in Antarctica. It's just not very probable. And this is what we call a thermodynamic probability. And the difference between a thermodynamic thermodynamic probability to mathematical probability is that thermodynamic is asking how many microstates? How many microstates do I have? How many microstates do I have to getting this result? Or rather, how many microstates is associated with this macro state, this big event? So the amount of microstates associated with this big event is five. Five. And Thermodynamic probability denoted by W. The W for this event is 5, and the W for this event is 1. But we can say that the W for this event is 20, and the W for this event is 1. And if we really calculated the one macro state, and again, this is a macro state, there's a macro state, there's an event in which rain would come down in the Sahara, but the micro states associated with it is just one, maybe two, maybe because there's another region somewhere here that is also blue, or maybe I'm going to add another blue region here, then I'm going to have a W of two, because I'm going to have two micro states associated with having rain in that particular area. And it just so happens that if we take if we take the one macro states of having hot weather and it's associated with more macro states than having rain, the macro state of rain, which is associated with, with less macro states, I can say that the macro state that has more micro states associated with it is the, is the most probable outcome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it here. The macro states macro state that has a higher a higher W or a higher um, number of micro states associated with it is most probable is most probable and the range of thermodynamic probability is from 1 to infinity because if I have 0 that means that there's no event associated here there's no way this this cannot really happen. There isn't an event described by this. There isn't an event described by this. And it could be up to infinity. And this is the difference between thermodynamic and mathematical probability, whereas mathematical can go from 0 to 1. Hopefully you found this helpful. And maybe just the little bit understanding of having a microstate that is associated with microstate is something that doesn't roll on your tongue very intuitively. But if you take your time to understand it, I do believe that it is possible to get an intuition for it. Very good. See you on the next video.